Jackie Doyle Price. Pleasure to be able to contribute to um, this debate. And, you know, I think our starting point as legislators must be to eradicate harms, but also in doing so, not to create new ones. And, and it's in that spirit that I really want to address the proposals in. Well, we haven't got a bill yet, so we are, we are sort of flying a bit blind, if I, if I might, might say so. Uh, but my issue really is use of the term therapy in this space. And we've already had some discussion uh, of that uh, earlier on, because what we're talking about are coercive, harmful practices based on an ideological opposition to uh, either being trans or being, or being gay, lesbian or bisexual. And those are the things that we really need to be re eradicating here. The term therapy, for me, implies something which is benign and designed to alleviate uh, distress, which is clearly not something we want to outlaw uh, in this space. And, and that would be for sexuality as well. Uh, as gender. So my plea really is for the government to re-examine this language because in respect of uh, transgender identity where the individual wishes to undergo medical uh, transition or, or surgical intervention, a therapeutic pathway is absolutely essential to establish informed uh, consent and we must not allow any law to be passed which would get in the way of those conversations and, and clinical interventions, which is designed to alleviate that distress. Yes, indeed. Um, in the spirit of the point that I made in my debate, that, that there are no two sides, I agree with her entirely, and I suspect she will find much unanimity in this room, that it should be about conversion practices. Yes. And I'm sure that the minister, who campaigned for many years for a ban on this before he became the minister, um, will be very aware of this and be doing everything he can to make sure it's the right bill uh, coming forward. So I agree with her entirely, and I'm sure the room will as well. Well, I'm grateful for that intervention, and indeed, although I've been very outspoken on these issues, I've had this conversation indeed with Jane Ozan, who again shares this. And I think, you know, in terms of getting to a good law, you know, my plea is to all of us, you know, we've heard lots of rhetoric in the speeches today, but if we really focus on what we do to create a law which really eradicates harm but gives support where it's needed, I think we can generate consensus, notwithstanding the heat and noise that goes on social media, there is much consensus in this room. Now, I, I come to this from being the Minister for Mental Health uh, with responsibility for gender medicine uh, at the time that the Church of England General Synod actually passed the motion in favour of, of the conversion therapy ban. And it's worth remembering that at that stage, it was only about sexuality and uh, not about gender. That was subsequently added in. But at the time... Um, I made it my business to look into exactly what the evidence was as to what the practices were we were trying to outlaw. And notwithstanding some of the references to uh, experiences that we've, we've heard, uh, I could find no evidence of uh, anything happening in a clinical setting after 1970. Um, so it, it became very, very clear that we were talking about uh, practices which were often based in uh, religious institutions, um, and, you know, very much based on an ideological belief against uh, same-sex attraction and, tra and transgender. And that's why I think we really need to really hammer down on outlawing exactly those things that, that, which, that we're trying to eradicate in terms of harm. And, and I think we've ended up in, with this vanilla term therapy for fear of uh, alienating those people for whom these are issues of religious belief. And uh, I, I, frankly, the risk of that outlawing uh, what are legitimate interventions uh, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be getting in the way of, of that. Um, so I think we really need to be very clear about what it is we are banning and be very, very clear that any uh, therapeutic intervention which is designed to alleviate distress will not be uh, eradicated by this legislation. And I really look forward to hearing some words of comfort from my honourable friend, the Minister, with whom I've had uh, many uh, discussions about these things. Um, I think it's also worth noting that the, the term trans can mean any number of things from you know, declaring yourself non-binary to wanting to go the, the whole uh, journey of, 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 of medical and surgical transition. And this is where I think the therapeutic care pathways are so important because for some people, gender dysphoria is a permanent condition which does need to be alleviated with, with, with treatment. But for others, it can be a symptom of something else. This is not a straightforward condition that has the same pathology in all people that experience it. 
you know, we know that it's prevalent uh, amongst people with autism. We also know it's prevalent, it can often be a very common uh, uh, thing to experience by girls going through puberty. Yeah. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Lady for giving way, and I wonder if I can just ask her and, and any other members in the room thinking of making that connection between trans and autism to be more thoughtful about how they are expressing that, because there are a number of people watching and listening to this who will find that particularly unhelpful, and I think that we can probably be a bit more nuanced in our language. I think it is important that we actually really do understand what we're talking about when we look, look at gender dysphoria. It can also be a symptom of trauma. And it's very important that we have this, these therapeutic care pathways. And we can shake your head. You know, I'm talking about this from experience, having looked deeply when, when being responsible for this area of medicine. And we do need to make sure that we're not putting people on irreversible care pathways, which will do them harm. And, you know, if we look at the example, for example, if I could continue, uh, if we look at the example, for example, of the Tavistol, where you know, their care pathway is based on therapy, as many as 40% desist. So that's, that's why it's important that people are given the space to explore what they believe to be their gender, because it can often be about something else, of course. I, I thank the, the member for giving way. Does she acknowledge the fact that puberty blockers, which I, I think is what she's referring to when she speaks about irreversible treatment, um, because that is the, the only medical treatment that the under-18s can have, are not irreversible, and that the point is to pause puberty, which can be done for many reasons. For example, premature puberty, um, and the, the whole point of them is that they're not irreversible. Um, puberty blockers are not, are, are, are not irreversible. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, the, the, actual facts of going through, the, the actual fact of blocking puberty may mean that, that the individual does not subsequently go through it. But she's right in the sense that puberty blockers were, were invented for a different purpose than for the treatment of gender dysphoria. So they were appropriate. They, they absolutely should be uh, dispensed. But they should not be used... As a, as, a, as a way of treating gender dysphoria without having gone through that therapeutic care pathway. I should also add that, you know, the real issue here is the provision of hormone treatment, which is routinely dispensed now uh, through people at, from the age of 16. And again, the impacts of those things are irreversible. So we see now a, a, a generation of, 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 of trans, trans men who have, have desisted who will now have, you know, loss of sexual function, uh, permanent, uh, you know, facial hair, uh, male pattern baldness, where a more sophisticated way of allowing them to explore their gender Good would word. mean that they had not gone through such a thing. Yes, of course. I'm making the mistake by, again, confusing what we are here to ban. And this is pseudo-practices. We are not um, aiming at banning NHS uh, therapies and practices um, that are conducted by professional me uh, and medical um, experts. We are, ba we, are, we are looking at banning conversion therapy, which is pseudo-scientific, often in private settings and not controlled. Yeah. I think she's actually agreeing with my general thesis, which is, which is that we shouldn't be using the term therapy in this bill, because these are the, the legitimate care pathways are exactly the things that we should be making sure that people can access so that they actually get the right decision for them. Because as we do know, if we can't access them through the National Health Service, there's a wild west out there on the internet and people will start getting very harmful interventions which aren't properly supervised. Yes, of course. All this about the intention of whatever is going on that with conversion therapy you're setting out with a predetermined objective to stop someone from being something or forcing them to be something else and all of the other therapies that, that the honourable member talks about are about an explorative process that may or may not through the choice of the individual lend to them taking puberty blockers or other things the, the therapists themselves won't be entering into it with an intention to force them to do that or to stop them from being something else again i think my honourable friend is agreeing with me um, and and it's, it is the term therapy that I'm objecting to on the face of this legislation because, of the, because, because again, we are, we are dignifying these practices with that description because therapies are exactly the things that, that I've been describing here. And, and, you know, there is no doubt that we need better care pathways uh, for people with, uh, you know, to explore their gender, no doubt at all. And, 
and uh, I know that my old friend will probably have something to say about that um, as well. So, I, I mean, that, that's really uh, as much as I really want to say about it. I, I think we must make sure that we, we really call this practice out for what it is. We must make sure that the bill only eradicates those harmful practices. And we must make sure that we, we are really ensuring that very clearly that good, benign, positive therapeutic interventions will not be outlawed by this legislation. Thank you.